Okay, we've been having a lot of people requesting this video talking through some breakout wide receivers, and we're going to do it a little bit differently. I'm not just going to be talking about a ton of breakout wide receivers that I think are going to break out in 2024. I'm going to be bringing up a ton of players that the community thinks is going to break out in 2024 and discussing if I agree with that price that they're currently being drafted at or not in fantasy football drafts. Starting it off with player number one that a lot of people think is going to break out to be a wide receiver one is going to be Mr. Garrett Wilson for the the New York Jets and you see the jersey behind me. I'm a huge Garrett Wilson believer in truther. So right now, if we're looking at his overall consensus ADP on all the sites, he's going off of the board as wide receiver seven. If we look at real money leagues on underdog, wide receiver eight, overall player 10. So Garrett Wilson is being drafted in the back end of the first early second round of your drafts. And the thing is with Garrett Wilson, the last two years, wide receiver 30, wide receiver 32 on a points per game basis. So you're going to be saying to me, Caleb, do you think Garrett Wilson is worthy of being a wide receiver one in 2024, but also being appropriately valued at this current cost. Now, when we start to dive into the actual metrics with Garrett Wilson, there's a lot to be excited about. Number one, 147 targets as a rookie in 2022. In 2023, had 168 targets. So we absolutely love the target share that my man is having. We look at the overall percentage of targets. He was wide receiver four on targets last year. Like, dude is an absolute target machine. Now, he had a crap ton of targets, but like, said didn't finish as even a wide receiver two last season. So you're going to say to me, Caleb, he's a high end wide receiver three the last two years with this target share. Where's the overall upside? The overall upside to me is the fact that he has not had a good quarterback. We have Aaron Rodgers who played literally like two snaps last year before tearing that Achilles. And so my man got stuck with Zach Wilson for the first two years of his career. And we saw how good Zach Wilson was so good that the Jets ended up letting him go to the Broncos. They wasted that second overall pick on him. When we look at this split chart with Garrett Wilson, with Zach Wilson, without Zach Wilson, Wilson. The thing that we're going to see is that there's almost a three points per game difference between him playing without Zach Wilson and with Zach Wilson. And listen, there were some bad quarterbacks like Zach Wilson beat out these guys that then came in like a Mike White. Like those are the quarterbacks that we're talking about that were able to give Garrett Wilson just a little bit of life in his points per game basis. And all of a sudden we add in Aaron Rodgers, who's the best quarterback of Garrett Wilson's whole career. If Garrett Wilson can just have an efficiency bump where he's able to get 168 targets and let's say get a bump to 110 to 120 receptions, like like, I think we're talking about Garrett Wilson as an absolute dominant wide receiver hog that can get higher than three total receiving touchdowns or four receiving touchdowns that he's had the last two years. So right now, I think Garrett Wilson properly valued. I think wide receiver one is 100% in his range of outcomes. You're having to draft him as a wide receiver one. I think even top five wide receiver potential is in Garrett Wilson's range of outcomes. My second player finding the next wide receiver one is going to be Mr. Drake London. And Drake London right now on the board is going off as overall player wide receiver 12 when we're looking at the aggregate AD P overall player 20. If we look over on underdog, very similarly priced at wide receiver 10 overall player 15. And when we're looking at Drake London, we see that Kirk Cousins comes into town. Drake London and Garrett Wilson, very similar to me over the last two years. They both came in in the same class, both top 10 picks. Drake London had Desmond Ritter for the first two years of his career and Marcus Mariota, Zach Wilson for Garrett Wilson. So when I'm looking at the overall upside for Drake London, you could talk me into it because we're talking about a super athletic, big 6'4 type wide receiver that hasn't been able to get the ball thrown to him in any sort of capacity over the last two years. 117 targets as a rookie, 109 targets last year. And he had the Arthur Smith factor where we had three running backs, Cardo Patterson, Bijan Robinson, Tyler Algier last year. And you saw Kyle Pitts and Drake London just be absolutely thrown to the wayside. Wide receiver 43, wide receiver 42. So as much as we think that they're in the same conversation, Drake London was actually way worse than Garrett Wilson on both a target share and also a points per game basis. So the thing is we have Kirk Cousins coming into town, big quarterback upgrade, but we also have a great backup in Michael Penix Jr. who has top 10 draft capital. So all of a sudden we have the two best quarterbacks of Drake London's career added into this year three. So you're going to say to me, okay, Caleb, I hear, I hear all this. Where are you at with Drake London? Do you think he's valued appropriately because you thought Garrett Wilson was valued appropriately? For me right now, I am thinking Drake London just feels a little bit priced too high. Listen, I love some Drake London. I love the prospect. I had Drake London, like I said, he was my second wide receiver in the class right behind Garrett Wilson when he came out in 2022. I still think he's super talented. I know Chris Olave, the last two years has performed better than Drake London. 
I like some Drake London. Who else in this offense? They signed Darnell Mooney. You still got Kyle Pitts involved, but we're assuming that this is a major quarterback upgrade. We're assuming that they can take this offense and make it more efficient with Bijan Robinson in the backfield. And I think Drake London is the best pass catching option in this offense. I just don't like having to draft a guy at wide receiver 10 when he hasn't even shown remote signs being able to get close to there. So it's a really risky proposition. We're just assuming that Drake London is going to be that dude. And while I think he can be that dude, right now I'm a little bit hesitant at his overall price. Could potentially be a wide receiver one, could potentially be the wide receiver one overall. I just don't like his current value on the draft board. So let me know what you think of Drake London down below. Would love to hear your thoughts if I'm going crazy on Drake London. My third player, like we said, that is getting a ton of hype from the community. A lot of people are excited about is going to be Mr. Malik Neighbors. Now Malik Neighbors, if we're looking at his aggregate ADP versus his underdog ADP, it is completely out of whack. Honestly, we got wide receiver 20 for Malik Neighbors on underdog, wide receiver 25. So there's a five spot difference versus on the aggregate ADP versus underdog. Now on the aggregate, you know, that's taken into consideration the ESPNs alongside underdog, sleeper, NFL, all that good jazz. So some of those are maybe free leagues. So maybe a lot of people are a little less aware of how good Malik Neighbors is going to be as rookie. Listen, Malik Neighbors is walking into a Giants offense that has absolutely nobody. We're talking about Darren Waller retire, Saquon Barkley's out of town. So all of a sudden we're having to look at Malik Neighbors as maybe the only option that Daniel Jones is going to have to go to. And you could reliably talk yourself into, hey, seeing Malik Neighbors getting 150 targets for himself in year one if he stays healthy and if everything goes right. That to me, it's a hard ask. It's a hard ask because we've seen these elite level wide receivers come in the NFL. We've seen the Jamal our chases. We've seen Justin Jefferson. We even saw C. Lamb as a rookie really perform well. We saw Garrett Wilson get all the targets, but then he didn't perform well. So that's my worry with Malik Neighbors is what if he's just Garrett Wilson? What if he's the most talented wide receiver on a terrible team with a terrible quarterback that can't get into the ball? Now, I think Daniel Jones is better than Zach Wilson, so don't get me wrong. I like that for Malik Neighbors. That's going for Malik Neighbors, but even still, Malik Neighbors would have to show out and be, like we said, this top 20 to top 25 wide receiver, even just to return value. But if we want to shoot for the upside and be an overall wide receiver one, that a lot of people are projecting, hey, he has the potential to be a top 12, a top eight, a top five wide receiver this year in fantasy football. Makes me just a little bit concerned. I'm not trying to say that I'm pumping the brakes, but I'm saying, hey, pump the brakes a little bit. I understand I'm a Ohio State Buckeye fan. So the same thing could be said for Marvin Harrison Jr., who is being drafted as a wide receiver one currently right now in fantasy football. You do have to take shots for the moon. And I do think Malik Neighbors, if you get him at value, like if I can draft him at wide receiver 25, I feel better. But like in underdog drafts, when I'm having to draft him as wide receiver 18, wide receiver 20, and it's just like, ugh. Yikes. How much do I trust Daniel Jones in the Giants offense? It's not a lot. So I'm just, I would say lukewarm is the feeling that I have with his current ADP value. Moving on to the next guy that has been super hyped this offseason and currently right now in fantasy football drafts. A lot of people are excited about him is George Pickens. And George Pickens right now on the overall conglomerate ADP is going off the board as wide receiver 29. We look on underdog, he's going off the board as overall player wide receiver 27. George Pickens versus Deontay Johnson. That's been the talk of pretty much the last two years with with George Pickens. And what we saw last year was George Pickens really start to separate himself as the wide receiver one. Now you have no Deontay Johnson. So you don't even have to have the discussion on who in this offense is going to be the one versus two. It is very clearly George Pickens. Now, the biggest concern for George Pickens is two things. Number one, Arthur Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, I understand Arthur Smith absolutely demolished Drake London's fantasy football value. He demolished any pass catcher's value in the offense, unless you were the backup tight end, the third string tight end for the Atlanta Falcons. Then somehow you were able to find the end zone each and every week. I understand that's the worry that we have to play here with George Pickens. But not only have we started to see a ton of highlights in camp, we also have to remember that they added Russell Wilson and Justin Fields as the quarterbacks, which is way better than Kenny Pickett that George Pickens has had to play with the last two years. Now, last year, wide receiver 36 on a points per game basis with only 12.3 fans points per game and 106 targets. So realistically, for George Pickens to hit a like a wide receiver one potential threshold, we're going to have to talk about George Pickens becoming a little bit more of a target hog, 120, 130, 140 type target season with a bump in touchdown receptions to really get him there. The biggest concern is we know we just talked about Arthur Smith. That's number one concern. The second overall concern here is going to be how much are they going to pass? Because as much as there are the targets, the vacant targets from Deontay Johnson, which honestly is somewhere around like 120 to 150 a season, not all of those are going to George Pickens. Even if George Pickens takes a little bit more of a target share where last year he had a 21.9% target share. Let's say we get him up to a 24, 25% target share. Is that going to be enough?
enough to boost George Pickens. I still view George Pickens as a high-end wide receiver three, a low-end wide receiver two. I don't think he has the potential to get to that wide receiver one, you know, wide receiver 10 to wide receiver 12 points per game difference for me. And so right now, I don't necessarily love the value of George Pickens, but I understand if you're able to talk yourself into George Pickens just based on the fact that there's the pros of Justin Fields, Russell Wilson, no other target competition. Let me know. Am I crazy on George Pickens? Not loving the current value on the ADP? Let me know down below. Next player that I think a lot of people in the community are super hype on right now is going to be JSN. And listen, every time I start talking about my Buckeyes, you guys see the jerseys behind me. A lot of people in the comments are like, Caleb, you're just biased. You don't like dissing on your Buckeyes. And JSN right now on underdog, I feel like has fallen a little bit where a lot of people are starting to pump the brakes on him. And JSN has fallen all the way down to wide receiver 45 on underdog. If we're looking at the overall conglomerate ADP where it's taken into account every, all the ADPs, Jason has fallen also to wide receiver 45. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about JSN, a wide receiver who was drafted in the top 20 20 picks. Let us not forget, Jason had an absolute amazing Rose Bowl game, and people are attributing that to the fact that that's why he got drafted because he got hurt in his junior season with a hamstring that he was never able to recover from. Listen, I'm just going to say, it. if JSN played against Georgia, CJ Stroud would have a national championship. Since he didn't play and then got drafted early and then got also hurt, he hurt his wrist late in camp last season, only put up 8.8 fantasy points per game, wide receiver 56, 93 targets, 63 receptions with 10 yards per reception. You look at these overall metrics and they just scream JSN might not be a good wide receiver. And if you were to argue based on that, I would say, yeah, things did not look good for JSN. Not only did he have to compete with targets with Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, he just was being used around the line of scrimmage. And that's 100% not the way that JSN should be used as an Ohio State Buckeye fan and as a guy that watched JSN absolutely demolish out of the slot. Now we have Shane Waldron gone and we have Ryan Grubbin who has talked about how excited he is to use JSN. Not only is Tyler Lockett another year older, JSN has the draft capital. They invested heavily in to JSN last year in the draft. And I think he's super talented. I think there's a case to be made that JSN could come out and I think it's going to be a lot closer between DK Metcalf and JSN than a lot of people are realizing. So right now his value is so deflated just because we haven't seen anything. And I know we talked about George Pickens. We have seen signs of life from George Pickens. So all of a sudden I'm talking about a guy that I'm super in it, but currently at cost at wide receiver 45, like this is a wide receiver four territory. I believe JSN has wide receiver one outcomes in his range of potentials. And of course everyone does. We can talk about that. But for me in my gut, Jason reminds me a ton of a guy like Amon Ross St. Brown, where if he's used appropriately out of the slot with a guy like Geno Smith, who's not a bad quarterback, he's not a great quarterback, he's just an average quarterback. Jason could absolutely be a wide receiver one in face football. Absolutely love the value. And bringing up my last and final player, it's going to be Curtis Samuel. And I know I talked about him in my video yesterday, Curtis Samuel. I absolutely love the current draft value on Curtis Samuel because you're having to draft him as wide receiver 51. Overall consensus over on all of the sites. But if we're looking specifically at underdog, he's wide receiver 49. So two spots higher from the paid draft drafts currently. Curtis Samuel has never played with a quarterback like Josh Allen. He's also been used in a bevy of different ways. Now add him into an offense that is desolate of weapons at the wide receiver front. Listen, I you might be a Khalil Shakir truther. You might be a Keon Coleman truther. The only truther I am in this offense at this current moment is Don Kincaid. And Keon Coleman's going way ahead of a guy like Curtis Samuel. Khalil Shakir is going behind Curtis Samuel. So Curtis Samuel, you're having to draft him as like the wide receiver two right now in this Buffalo Bills offense. But everything that I'm starting to read from camp, all the reports, are starting to say Curtis Samuel's looking good. And if Curtis Samuel ends up being the one, I don't know. I don't know what that target's going to look like because Josh Allen does like to spread the ball out. But besides Dalton Kincaid, I want as many pieces of this offense as I can get because I still like Josh Allen. I still like the ultimate level ceiling. Curtis Samuel is a low-key dark horse to really outperform his ADP. And I think wide receiver one, like we could be talking about him. There was some stretches last year and in previous years where we saw Curtis Samuel actually absolutely go on a tear. And he had Sam Howell, Carson Wentz thrown him the ball like listen he's getting the biggest quarterback upgrade of his life curtis samuel absolutely loving the wide receiver one overall potential upside and helping you find that next wide receiver one so let me know what you think of these guys down below let me know how you're finding the next wide receiver one in fantasy football appreciate you guys for tuning in we're putting out a video a day at this point helping you guys prepare for your fantasy football seasons and your fantasy football drafts hit that like and subscribe button once you're here all season to help you win a fantasy football championship i'll catch you on the next one peace